Hello and welcome to Start Learning Sets. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. This is part two and today we will talk about how we can form new sets. The key ingredient for this comes again from logic and is called a predicate. A good example for this would be the sentence n is an even number. Please note, this is not a logical statement because this variable n is just undetermined. And we have the same thing for the next sentence, x is an animal. It has no well-defined truth value when we don't know what x is. It's also the same for a more mathematical example, y plus 8 is equal to 9. Now what you should note here is that the letters n, x and y are not any fixed numbers or fixed objects, but just placeholders. Therefore maybe it would be better to write each sentence with such a gap, which could be filled. Now when you put in a chosen object, you get out a logical statement. For example, if we fill in the number 2, we get out 2 is an even number, which is a logical statement. Also we get 2 is an animal, 2 plus 8 is 9, also logical statements. This simply means that each of the sentences has a well-defined truth value, if you know it or not. However, in this case, we already know it. We know 2 is an even number as a true logical statement and the other ones are false. Now, the important thing here is, when you change the object you put in, this could also change the truth value. For example, putting in the number 1, we get out a false logical statement for the first one, but a true one for the last one here. Okay, maybe that's not a problem for you, but understanding this whole concept here is the essential step in the construction of sets. So what you saw here were three examples of so-called predicates. And maybe we should write down the idea of such a predicate. So we see a predicate as an expression with undetermined variables, and the variable was the box before, and of course we could have more than just one box in the sentence. And this expression now ascribes a property to objects that we put into the boxes. So we substitute a variable with something else and when this something else does not contain any variables anymore, we get out a logical statement. For example, in mathematics you can always think of something like this, so x plus 8 is equal to 9. And then you would say, for every number I put in for x, I get out another logical statement. Okay, now we can finally talk about sets and I'll show you how you can form new sets out of old sets by using predicates. For this we use the curly brackets as set brackets. Then one specifies the variable name, for example x. And also the old set we consider here, for example the natural numbers n. And then comes a line or a colon, depends what you like. And then on the right hand side there comes a predicate which uses the chosen variable. For example, here we have the predicate x is an even number. Now the whole thing you should read as the set of all x in n that satisfy x is an even number. So this means that this set contains each element from the bigger set that gives you a true logical statement when you put it into this predicate. Hence the visualization should be like this. You have here the old set which is in our example n, but it could be any set. Then you put the elements into the predicate and check the truth value. So two here, two here, and maybe false for other ones. And there you see, we get out a new collection. All the elements we checked green form the new set. The important thing for you is now, this construction we can always do in set theory. Okay, maybe another example. So here, the set of all y in z that fulfill that y is actually an element in the natural numbers. Hence please note, this element relation we have for sets is always a predicate. Okay, maybe for the sake of visualization, let's consider a non-mathematical example. Here we have the set A of the 8 known planets of the solar system. For this, let's form the set of all planets P, such that P has at least one confirmed moon. So everything works, we get out a new set, and you can check for yourself all the elements of the set. Okay, then let's go back to a general predicate where we can check the truth value of every object we put in. Therefore a natural question would be how many objects satisfy the predicate? To answer this question we have two new symbols called quantifiers. 
The first one is the for all quantifier, a reversed A. This means that you go through all the objects and you would use the correct variable and put it right next to it. So you would always read that as for all x. Now the other one is the reversed E and this one stands for it exists. Then this means that you find at least one object and we also use the correct variable, for example x. And you should always read that as it exists at least one object x. In short, it exists x. Now we always combine a quantifier with a predicate and what comes out is a logical statement. For example, take the predicate x is a planet. Then the combination would read for all x and then comes a colon x is a planet. You could omit the colon but it helps reading it because you could say for all x we have x is a planet. Now you should see since we go through all the objects x here and check each object if it's a planet, we don't have any undetermined variable left here. So we get out a logical statement with a well-defined truth value. In this case, because not every object we consider here is indeed a planet, it's a false logical statement. Okay, now in the same way, the combination with the exists works. So it exists x, colon, x is a planet. Also here, the colon helps reading it, you would say there exists x such that x is a planet. So this means that we have at least one object that satisfies the predicate. In other words, it's a logical statement that can be either true or false. For this example, since we already know we have eight planets, this one is true. Hence always keep in mind the exists quantifier always has an at least in the meaning. Now having these quantifiers we can define a lot of things for our sets. And the very first thing we should do is defining the equality sign. Of course we already know two sets should be the same when they contain the same elements. But now we can write down the correct meaning of this. So we say that two sets A and B are the same written as A is equal to B. If for all x we have x is in A if and only if x is in B. So you see this whole thing is now our predicate and the quantifier says it should be true no matter which x we put in. And we can write a is equal to b if the logical statement that comes out here is true. Or to put it in another way for two fixed sets a and b instead of this long formula here we just use this symbol. Of course it's better to understand if we look at examples. The set that contains 2, 3 and 5 as numbers is the same as the set that contains 3, 5 and 2. Of course, this is what we want, the order shouldn't matter. However, for this example, let's check if the equality actually holds. In order to do this, let's use some short names. So let's call the left hand side the set C and the right hand side the set D. Please recall, this was the assignment operator for introducing new names. You can use it from left to right and also from right to left. So the colon just tells you where the new name is introduced. Okay, now we have to check this one for the set C and D and for all possible objects X. Therefore let's start with the number 1 as an object. So is 1 in C if and only if 1 in D a true statement? Yes, it's true because you know the biconditional. The left hand side is a false statement and the right hand side is a false statement, which means the biconditional is 2. Now the next object would be the number 2, so we have 2 in C if and only if 2 in D. Of course this one is also true because now both sides in the biconditional are 2. Now you see we can continue this for all objects, either we are in this case for the numbers 2, 3 and 5 or we are in the first case for all other objects. Therefore the sets are indeed the same, they are equal. A similar example would now be if we repeat some elements. Also here the two sets are equal because we can do the same checks as before. Ok, now besides the equality sign for sets, we also have the subset sign for sets. The idea would be we have a large set B and a smaller set A inside. 
In other words, A contains no other elements than B, but maybe fewer. And the symbol we use is the subset relation written as this. Please note, sometimes the line underneath here is omitted. Now in the same way as for the equality, the meaning is given with a quantifier. So for all x, we have that if x is in A, it is also in B. So in this case, we just have a conditional from left to right. Now I should tell you that for this whole expression here, we will use a shorter notation from now on. Namely, we will just put the element relation from the left hand side to the quantifier itself. So we would read it as for all x in A, we have x in B. With this we now know if this logical statement is true, we call A a subset of B. To close this video I can also tell you that we can use the symbol in a mirrored way as we do it for inequality signs. It totally has the same meaning, so A is a subset of B, but sometimes it can be helpful to write a subset on the right hand side. Ok, I think that's enough new notations and definitions for today. Let's use the next video to consider more examples and also more set operations. With this, thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye!